Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to everyone. It is Tuesday. It is February 9th. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. And you know, some days like today when it's muggy outside, you just get a really bad hair day and you have to use the extra hairspray or hair gel. Mark, I know you completely understand this. And so does a woman uh, from Louisiana who decided to use something a little extra strength. She, she ran out of hair care products. Tessica Brown is her name. She went viral recently for using Gorilla Glue as hairspray. It may finally come unstuck, though, with the help of a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon who's now reportedly offering to remove this sticky stuff for free. This story I became completely invested in. It's been a viral thing. Uh, you know, originally, so she's tried several different, pers uh, you know, she went to the ER, they tried paint thinner. This has been going on for a month. She's tried uh, washing it 15 times. The plastic surgeon said in order for this to come out, he has to use medical grade glue remover in a procedure that could take three days. Now, Ms. Brown has raised more than $13,000 in an online fundraiser and is set, we understand, to fly to L.A. tomorrow. Now, the procedure is estimated to cost almost all of that, $12,500, but Dr. Michael Obing has now offered to do it for free. But there's more. Yes, so Gorilla Glue has tweeted its sympathies over the unfortunate situation, but stressed there's no reason to think it was wise to use on hair. She may actually be considering suing the company over yeah. this nightmare. Yeah, they've, they've offered to help out, you know, offering tips and stuff uh, over the last month or so. But yeah, she's reportedly considering suing over the nightmare with the glue, which is only intended to be used with products like wood, laminate, fabric, paper, and cardboard. Gorilla Glue had tweeted its sympathies over this unfortunate situation, but there are reports this morning that she has indeed hired an attorney and is prepared to proceed against Gorilla Glue. She couldn't even get a razor blade underneath it to mm -hmm. shave it off because it was so stuck on there. So the news this morning again is this plastic surgeon is offered help for free and she may be ready to go to court. And never put Gorilla Glue on your hair. You'd think that would be obvious, but maybe okay. not. All right, here's today's nine at nine. You can now make a reservation to get a COVID-19 vaccine through WellMed this morning. The hotline opened at 8 a.m. and will go through 8 p.m. or until slots are filled. We have more information as well as the phone number on ksat.com. Bear County continues to see a drop in daily coronavirus cases. There were only 235 new cases. A seven day moving average is 922 per 24 hours, dipping below 1000 for the first time in weeks. One new death was also reported. Rise for a moment of silence in remembrance of the late Honorable Ron White of T Texas. Wright is the first sitting member of Congress whose life has been claimed by COVID-19. He's been honored as a fighter by his fellow Republicans. They paid tribute to him in December by sporting bow ties to support him in his battle with cancer. San Antonio ISD says it will start phasing in more students into the classroom. The district says that another small group of students will start in-person learning on February 22nd. Schools will be contacting families this week. The second Senate impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump is scheduled to begin today. The former president facing one article of impeachment for incitement of insurrection. House impeachment managers will argue the former president was responsible for encouraging a mob of his supporters to storm the U.S. Capitol building last month. Investigators are expected to announce the probable cause of the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. Bryant, his daughter, and seven others died when the chopper taking them to a basketball tournament went down near Los Angeles. Back here in San Antonio, Animal Care Services still actively trying to locate a tiger after escape a southwest side home Friday afternoon. The city says if you're caught with a forbidden animal in the city limits, you face possible jail time. If you've seen anything like this, you're urged to call 311 or call police. Hospitals in Washington state are scrambling to pull hundreds of thousands of counterfeit N95 masks out of circulation. The maker of the real masks, 3M, alerted Homeland Security after finding the fakes. Officials say it's hard to tell which ones are real. 
And Democrats have outlined their stimulus check proposals. They hope to send $1,400 to Americans who make less than $75,000 a year. But a key Democrat in the Senate wants to lower the threshold to $50,000 a year. And that's today's 9 at 9. Mark, can you imagine opening your back door to let your dog out and there's a tiger? <laughs> no, I can't. Oh my gosh. I, that, I, I that played the scenario in my head like, okay, if that happens, I need to somehow get the dog back in. Will the door hold? If the, I, I don't know. I don't know. And you and I were talking about this during the early show. The, the original story was that it was a tiger cub, but to you and I, that looked Not anything a baby. like a little baby cub. <laughs> That's a big cub. Like a juvenile. <laughs> Sumatran tiger. Oh, well, hopefully it is found and safely returned. Hopefully. We'll keep everybody updated. That story has developed all weekend long right here and also on KSAT.com. Let's go outside on your Tuesday morning. Very mild. Lots of moisture to work with. What's happening out there right now, Justin? Well, it, it's foggy, Mark, and you're right about the moisture. It is humid for now. It is warm for now. What we're watching today, though, is a cold front, which is just to our north, and this is going to play havoc on the forecast and the temperature forecast today. So let's jump right in. First off, yes, it's still warm out there. 65 degrees. Dew point is at 63. We've got a little bit of fog here in San Antonio, but more so off to the west, seeing visibility's really drop down. Temperatures today, again, tricky. Depending on where this front sets up, we're thinking the temperatures may drop a little bit this afternoon should that front move through. May keep temperatures in the 60s. Let's talk about visibility, though, real quick. Actually, no, we're going to talk about temperatures. Mix it up here. 19 in Amarillo, 25 in Lubbock, 27 in Abilene, 39 in Waco. So you can see clearly where that front is located. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. It is through Austin and it's trying to push a little bit farther south. Uh, looking at visibility, there is where all the fog is, especially west of I-35. You're seeing visibility down to a quarter of a mile, down to half a mile. So be extra careful. It's not too bad here in San Antonio right now. And again, temperatures today, uh, we're thinking 60s for the most part. Mostly cloudy skies, usually winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. It does get progressively colder, and the weekend temperatures are cold. Uh, we could have some precipitation, too. So we're going to talk about all of that coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside at Transguy, I-35 at Alamo. There appears there was an accident earlier, but it has since cleared. Top stories we are following today. A woman was hit and killed while attempting to cross an access road of Loop 410 last night. San Antonio police say it happened around 1020 last night near Alamo Downs Parkway, not far from Culebra Road. According to police, the woman was trying to cross the road when she was struck by the vehicle. Police said the driver did stop to render aid, but that the female driver was too shaken up to give good information about how the crash happened. The name of the woman killed was not released. No charges are expected to be filed, according to police. And we're waiting on the identity of the man who police say was killed in a high speed crash yesterday. According to officers on scene, the driver of the truck lost control due to a wet patch on the road. Police say he began to skid uncontrollably in oncoming traffic around 530 near commercial and southwest military. That's when the two the two vehicle uh, collided. The passenger in the truck was pronounced dead on the scene. The two drivers were taken to different hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. Province San Antonio attorney Martin Phipps was arrested after investigators say he harassed a woman to the point that she left for Mexico in fear for her life. Charging documents show Phipps was taken into custody yesterday on a misdemeanor warrant for phone harassment. In the documents, the victim describes Phipps' confrontation with her as, quote, in an aggressive and agitated state, end quote. SAPD says she believed Phipps was under the influence of drugs at the time. Phipps was the leading attorney on Bear County's opioid litigation. According to records review, Phipps also has a pending complaint filed with the Texas State Bar. In your morning headlines, a teenager loses control of his car, slams into a house, and if you swallow an AirPod, will it still work? And a skinny house for sale for a fat price. David Sears is here with those headlines. Good morning, David. Um, maybe don't swallow any AirPods. Don't, don't do that. No. And ha have you heard of those like tiny houses? Yeah. All right, well, this is a skinny house. Okay. This is like different than the tiny house, so don't get them confused. Okay. We'll separate the two here in just a second. But first, Facebook says it's gonna fight misinformation when it comes to vaccines. 
and it will fight on all platforms. The company announcing several ways it's going to go after that bad info. One thing they are going to do is make it harder to find anti-vaccine information on Instagram. That particular platform and the announcement comes after CNN reported that Instagram continues to prominently feature anti vaccine accounts in its search results. There are groups on Facebook that are anti vaccine and they're still easy to find and that has public health experts concerned, especially since the country is in the middle of its largest vaccine rollout ever. So in order to combat what they say is misinformation, they're going to start showing links to local health websites instead. All right now watch over here and listen. Oh, that is a teenager slamming his car into that house right there all happening in Sacramento. That is ring camera video getting all the action. You might expect the teenager is suspected of drunk driving. He took out a couple of cars on the street, then nailed the house, debris flying everywhere. He took out a huge column right off the front of the home, took out a palm tree, some lights, and then went right through a wall into the garage that is actually the family's gym. That's a lot of damage to the gym, uh, broken destroyed. glass, the equipment is damaged. We're still kind of shaken up about everything. Um, cleanup is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, the teenager tried to run away from the scene after the crash, like they're not going to figure out who it was. Police did figure it out. They caught him. There were no reports of any injuries, which is good. All right, now let's take it to Milwaukee. Highway ramp car right there hits the snow bank, and look at that. Car dropped 70 feet off that ramp. Here it is again. You can see the car just crashing onto the highway below. Lucky no cars hit him. The driver into that snow bank just goes right over the wall. Believe it or not, police say he survived, was not impaired, just lucky or unlucky, depending on how you want to look at it. All right, have you ever lost your iPods? You might want to check your esophagus. Happened to Brad Gaithier. He was asleep with his iPod, AirPods in his ears. Did I say iPods first? Yeah. AirPods, iPods. It's a little thing you stick in your ear. He was asleep with them. He was listening to some movie or music or something. When he drank some water after he woke up, he had this weird feeling. He started looking for the pod all around his room, under the mattress, nothing. Since he felt strange, he headed for the urgent care, and sure enough, the x-ray showed that the air pod was right there in his lungs. Doctors removed it. The big question, did it work? Brad said the audio was good, but the mic was a little bit glitchy. Don't swallow your air pods. All right, isn't that a nice looking house? No, not all that. This right here, this, just, just that right there, just that blue part. That is a house for sale. That blue one, it's six feet wide. That's it. It has just over 1,000 square feet, though. It's five stories tall and at one time was a hat shop. Now it's a house and it's for sale for $1.3 million. Just that little blue skinny thing. It's only six feet. That's it. That's all you get. Do we know why? Because it's in London, London. one of the priciest places to live on the entire planet. Ah, moving furniture into that home. God bless those movers. So if you're above six foot, like Justin, Justin couldn't sleep across. He'd have to sleep long ways. That's no good. That's not yeah. good for him. He hasn't so. perfected sleeping standing up so. just yet. What are you, <laughs> six four, right? Yeah. Man, that, yeah. I don't know if that worked for you. That's not going to work. And who wants to walk up five stories Ugh. all day long? Pricey for, for London. For yep. 1.3 million. Even from London standards. All right, David, thank you. 9 11, 65 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. 60 shows to empty storefronts through mid-March. Details on the new live pop-up concert series happening in New York. Making sure teachers get back the money they spent making classrooms safe last year. Details on deductions they may be eligible for. And good morning, guys. We have a congressional letter right here signed by three Texas congressmen, three very different Texas congressmen, all aimed at the administrator of the TSA. After the break, we're going to explain what that could mean for the San Antonio International Airport. And let's take a look at stocks. They're down about 60 points at 31,326. 915, welcome back to GMSA. Bipartisanship, or lack thereof, has been talk of the country for years now. But now, lawmakers from opposite ends of the spectrum are coming together in the name of safety. Our Max Massey joins us live from the San Antonio International Airport. Max, what is bringing these lawmakers together? 
Good morning, guys. I know you both have dogs of your own, so how could we resist coming together for the love of dogs, except in this circumstance, it's not the love of dogs, it's more so the security aspect of what dogs could bring to the San Antonio International Airport. So it was a letter led by new congressman, there you go, new congressman, Tony Gonzalez, and he is actually requesting support for passenger screening canine teams here at the San Antonio International Airport. Congressman Gonzalez was joined by Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro and Congressman Chip Roy on the letter to the administrator. San Antonio International Airport services the seventh largest city in the country. We host 11 carriers with international routes. So having passenger screening canine assistance could increase security throughout the airport and increase the ability of TSA to safely process passengers. I spoke with Congressman Gonzalez. This is what he had to say. And I believe in uh, preparing before the storm happens and security is important. San Antonio is a large city and we have to make sure that we're secure against uh, not only today, but the, the next the next uh, uh, security incidents. That's one. The other is I recently visited uh, the airport and I did a tour with uh, with their officials. And this is one of the issues that they brought up. Now, Congressman Gonzalez added that anytime you can add dogs to the equation, it is a win. Now, they are excited about the bill and to work with other people like Congressman Castro's office and Congressman Chip Roy's office. I mean, guys, these are very different offices. The congressman said it is an easy way that we can get in line with bipartisan fashion and hopefully we can build upon it. Now, I obviously also reached out to the other congressman's offices, Joaquin Castro's office. They said they are optimistic about bipartisanship going forward, but couldn't go on cam with the interview with me because he is a manager in the impeachment trial. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Max. This all makes sense, Sarah, because uh, TSA trained uh, dogs are actually trained to joint base Lackland right here in San Antonio. So those dogs wouldn't have very far to go for that deployment to San Antonio International. Such good dogs. Yeah, they're good dogs. Tons of dogs down there mm -hmm. and trainers in, all in training right now as we speak. 918, Justin's back in the mix here, and you have a lot to talk about this week, Justin. Oh, it's a busy seven day. A lot of cold air headed our way. We could get a little bit of rain this week, too, so let's jump right in. First, let's go outside for you, show you what the scene is. We've got some low hanging clouds, a little bit of fog in spots. 65 degrees at the airport, 65 at Stinson, 65 at Kelly, and 66 at Randolph. Winds are light across the board. That's been a pretty good setup for fog. We've seen visibility come down, especially west of I-35. So places like Bernie Stage, you're down about a mile and three quarters there. You go west, we're talking about a quarter of a mile visibility in Uvalde. Same story in Del Rio. It's going to be slow going here with these low visibilities, and they'll last a while longer. There is uh, no longer a dense fog advisory in effect, though, but uh, it's still going to be rather dense, at least uh, in spots. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture and a couple of things I want to point out here. We've got cloudy skies for most of us. But you see kind of a line right there. That is our frontal boundary that we're watching. And it is making some pretty good progress to the south. This is going to make forecasting temperatures today very tricky. Some of us are going to be fairly warm, 70s and 80s, and some of us are going to be pretty chilly if you're north of that front. And we'll show you that here in just a second. Bigger picture, you can see the cloud deck across the state, most of the state, minus West Texas, underneath these clouds. And the temperatures are cold, especially across North Texas. 22 in Wichita Falls, 19 right now in Amarillo, 39 in Waco, 34 in San Angelo. So you can see the difference here with this front. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. It is through Austin. Austin is now in the 40s. It's through San Marcos. It's making its way towards New Braunfels. So it looks like New Braunfels may be on the cold side of things today. Whether or not this front makes it all the way to San Antonio, still a question, but it's going to wreak havoc on the temperatures. I think we'll probably stay in the 60s for highs today. If you're south of there, again, some warmer numbers. Uh, our forecast looks like this as it stands right now. Cloudy skies, noontime, still some mist and drizzle out there. And then temperatures may fall off a little bit as we get into the afternoon with mostly cloudy skies. Here's sort of a generalization of how we think temperatures will play out. Uh, today, 50s for San Antonio, New Braunfels, maybe a little bit chillier as you go north, and then 60s, 70s, and maybe even close to 80 down to the south. As we get into tomorrow, probably some 50s for San Antonio. The cold stuff stays north, and then you still got warm temperatures down to the south. As we get into Thursday, though, that cold air really starts to push in. We're talking about 30s and 40s now for uh, parts of the area, and that will certainly be the case Friday into Saturday and this weekend. 
very cold, we could be looking at 20s and 30s. So the cold air kind of progresses south as we get a little bit closer to the weekend, and we know the weekend will be cold. As far as rainfall goes, uh, cloud cover is going to stay with us. Uh, showers possible tomorrow morning, and then uh, maybe a few showers Wednesday afternoon as well. But the better chance of rain shows up on Thursday. We'll get showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms, and then those rain chances move out uh, Thursday night. We'll get some more chances, though, as we get later into the weekend. And we mentioned that it will be cold, so there is a chance for a light wintry mix Sunday into Monday as temperatures dip below freezing. Uh, but we'll go 55 tomorrow, 44 Thursday. There are your chances for rain there. 45 Friday, 42 Saturday, and then some really cold stuff, especially late in the weekend. Those overnight lows in the 20s. Now's the time to start thinking about some of those preparations for the cold weather, wrapping some of those pipes, perhaps taking care of the plants, the pets, all that fun stuff. Guys. And before we leave weather entirely, happy birthday to meteorologist Adam Kasky. Yes, happy birthday, Adam. Happy, happy birthday. birthday, Adam. Can you imagine if it snowed on Valentine's Day? I know. That's so cool. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> yep. All right, 922, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a plan to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. How one report says it could affect the U.S. job market. In your consumer news this morning, President Biden's plan to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2025 would reduce poverty, but, would, but could also cause job losses. That's right. This week, the Congressional Budget Office released a report saying the $15 minimum wage hike would reduce the number of people in poverty by 900,000 and result in lower spending on food stamps and child nutrition, pro nutrition programs. However, the office uh, says that the move would cut employment by nearly one and a half million workers and would increase the federal deficit by $54 billion over 10 years. The minimum wage has been $7.25 an hour since 2009. Climate change is forcing oil companies, large and small, to rethink their once reliable business models. Chevron CEO Michael Wirth says oil and gas will still be a very big part in 20 years, but he pointed specifically to expansions into cleaner alternatives such as green hydrogen, renewable natural gas, and carbon capture and storage. In recent years, other major oil companies have announced plans to gradually embrace clean energy. Now to some good news this morning, a nonprofit working with Fresno County out in California and other organizations to get agricultural workers vaccinated against COVID-19. Latino Community Foundation Program Manager Adriana Saldivar says COVID-19 affects her community disproportionately. That's why the group is working with organizations to get the vaccine directly to farm work sites. The county has developed a pilot vaccination program and officials say is being well received. Live music is returning to New York City. A pop up concert series called Musical Storefronts will bring 60 shows to empty storefronts through mid March. The project is funded through a foundation which employs artists who've lost work because of the pandemic. The shows will feature everything from chamber musicians to Broadway stars. To make sure audiences abide by social distancing rules, shows will be announced the same day. Well, that's one way to do it. Cute. 927, 66 degrees. We're still ahead in our next half hour, tearing up a lake in Canada. A look at the 94 year old water skier that solidified his place in the record books. And some financial tips for educators, the tax deductions that you may be eligible for. And next, a recap of last night's Spurs game against the Warriors. Our RJ Marquez and David Sears, they'll have all the highlights. Feeling good this morning after a nice win by the Silver and Black. Yeah, David and RJ here to break down the first of two games between our San Antonio Spurs and those Golden State Warriors. Good morning, guys. Awesome good night. Good morning. Awesome yeah. game. Yeah. You <laughs> yes. know, if you if you if you've been watching since the beginning of the season, like we all have, you've you've witnessed a growth in this team. I don't, I don't want to get mm -hmm. like you know sentimental and all trite oh. and all you know. <laughs> Oh, and then they're growing. The kids are growing up. Yeah. But, the kids are, but they are. I mean, DeJounte Murray is playing so much better now than he was at the beginning of the season or even last year. I mean, I mean, he's getting a lot of playing time and he's getting a lot of coaching, quote unquote, from Pop. Yeah, there's <laughs> you know a lot what of that. that. Means. Ask um, Tony Parker what that means. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot. Go, there's a lot of that going on. But I got to say, I, you know, 
this was a really good win for the Spurs. Yep. I feel like Golden State had kind of had their number over the past couple of years. Not last year. Golden State kind of threw in the towel on the season. But uh, you remember when the Warriors swept them. They had Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson. They still have Steph Curry, Draymond Green. But I just was really impressed that the Spurs were able to come back from 14 down in the first half and take care of business. So let's check out some I think of that it's action. Just two quality wins in a row, beating mm-hmm. Houston in Houston and then, and then last night. So, yeah, here's some of the highlights. Uh, Steph is just uh, this guy. This he's got drives you nuts. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what are you supposed yeah. to do? You stand and like, back and the watch. Dance is good. Huh? You stand back and watch. Yeah, dance. it's yeah. like for, and Rudy Gay just kind of walked down the other end. Like I don't know what else I can do. <laughs> got my hand in his face and everything else. Still sticks it. This kid is really coming up. I mm-hmm. like that pass right there. That was nice. nice. Yeah. Um, Between Jakob and Drew Eubanks, those two are filling that center position role ooh, very, very yes, well. They are. And yeah. then. I don't know what got into Dejounte last night. But. Yeah, Jakob finished with 14 points yeah. and 11 rebounds. Again, double, double. big effort for him. And then Dejounte hitting some really clutch shots here late in the game. To, Look at this uh, one. Isis. He slipped and still spun, <laughs> got into the corner and did that. He had a near triple double mm-hmm. last night. He had uh, what? He, what he had? He had 27 points. Mm-hmm. He had eight steals to go along with 10 rebounds so he needed yeah. two more steals and he had that yeah double. it's not very often you see the uh the triple Ooh, double with the steals with the steals um, yeah yeah and Dejounte again the most steals by an NBA player so far this season eight steals and just a uh, look at that just a, a massive effort down the stretch for Dejounte you feeling. mentioned that he's really kind of learning how to be the point guard um and I think we're going to hear from Dejounte and coach Pop on this big win last night we do game winners like that to the corner or wherever we're at so you know, at the end of the day, though, it's not about the game. You know, the, the clutch shot. Uh, it's just me just staying confident and, and being ready to shoot the ball. If I think he's floating out there, I'll get on his butt, and uh, he handles it. Uh, you know, kind of like Tony did, uh, and his competitive competitiveness raises. So, uh, and then, you know, and then he'll say, "Hey, stay on me, stay on me." That's, that's what we were talking about. He's, he's getting yeah. coached like Tony Parker got coached. Yeah. You know, I think one of the one of the keys. Yeah is uh, Derek White, he's struggling on the offensive mm-hmm. side of the ball, but on the defensive side of the ball, he's, 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 I think he's made a difference in the starting lineup as far as the Spurs. They got down 14 in the second quarter, but they're not getting blown out in the first quarter. You know, there is, you don't look up at the end of the first and they've been down 19 or 15 or whatever yeah. already. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, Derek's been huge, especially, as we say, in the second half yesterday, Golden State only scores 41 points uh, yeah. after really a nice first half by the Warriors. And they did a nice job on Curry, as we've been saying. It's it's so hard to do that, uh, hmm. but we will get to see this, uh, yeah. this action again tonight. Cause fine, nice got, job. <laughs> nice job, right? <laughs> he still had like 35 he had points. 30, he had 32, <laughs> 10 of 17 shooting, and he was 6 11 from yes. three. That's I love this job. post from the Spurs on Instagram from about 20 minutes ago. And it's a picture of DeJounte and DeMar. Mar and it says, I'll never let him in my house. He might steal something. Yes. Damar Rosen Ooh. on DeJounte yeah, Murray's him. career high eight steals. Eight, eight I steals love it. Last night. Eight steals. I'll yeah. never let him in my house. He might steal something. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun moment there from uh, from DeMar. But uh, yeah, if you watch those plays, DeJounte's gotten so good at just kind of anticipating what the offensive guys are going to do. And we've seen this now multiple games this season from him closing out uh, big wins here. For Old school for a second. Alvin Robertson uh, had a quadruple double <laughs> yeah. and it included steals. One of the categories he had double figures in was yeah. steals. Yeah. Did so. David Robinson get there? David Robinson also had a quadruple oh, double. With blocks. But he with had blocks. With yeah, blocks. Yeah, yeah. I think Tim Duncan also blocks. Let's do it again tonight. Let's go. So, Let's yeah, this is weird. You know what? I'm kind of, this is kind of growing on me. I kind of like this playing two nights in a row. I'm sure the Spurs could care less. They don't want to play two nights in a row because <laughs> they're going to be tired. Ready but for a wait a minute, like yeah, there, David. You're <laughs> loving these back-to-backs now. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's kind of it, it's kind of like baseball. You know, you play two or three games in a row yeah. with the same team. I kind of like this. We're gonna have to go find all the archive video of you saying this stinks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Spurs three straight wins. Let's hey. go for four tonight. I'm Take growing. growing. I'm growing. You're growing. And like the young guys. I'm like the young guys. And it sounds like guys, you're on board with the idea the Spurs have now gelled a bit. A bit. Yeah. Hey, I mean, they got a long okay. way to go. But, okay. But hey, they're they're getting some quality wins. Mm-hmm. About a third of the season yeah. done. Looking pretty good so yeah. far. So, RJ, David, place. thank you guys, and Close good luck tonight, Spurs against Golden State yet again. Oh, and this fog just continues to hang around 66 degrees. Justin, will is this fog going to clear up? 
It will a little bit, Sarah, as we get into the afternoon, but it's going to take some time. We've had some pretty thick fog off to the west of San Antonio. We are also watching a cold front, which is complicating the forecast a bit today. Let's take a look at the temperatures across the state. Very cold stuff up across North Texas. 25 Lubbock, 27 in Abilene, 34 in San Angelo, 39 in Waco. It's in the 40s now in Austin, so we know this front is still moving south. And a little bit of an update there. New Braunfels temperature just dropped, so we know it's starting to move into New Braunfels, and it is still progressing southward. So the big question is, does it make it to San Antonio? I think it probably does, or at least keeps temperatures from getting too warm this afternoon. So we're going to keep highs in the 60s. Visibility-wise, yes, the fog is still there, especially west of I-35, Hondo, uh, Uvalde, Carrizo Springs areas where we're seeing quite a bit of fog, also down towards Victoria as well. Forecast today. Again, cloudy skies, there's going to be some drizzle through at least the noon hour. Uh, again, the fog will start to lift. And then this afternoon, we're thinking 60s, depending on where that front uh, sets up. And then some colder stuff ahead with more chances for rain, too. So a very busy forecast. We'll have much more on that seven-day forecast for you here in just a few minutes. Guys. Quick check of trans guide right now. We have fog hanging on 1604 and Shane Field. But uh, again, if this front gets closer, it's possible that could all be swept away. We'll keep an eye on it for you. Educators filing their taxes this year may be eligible for a deduction for some items they purchased to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the classroom. Ivan Hedetta tells us about the IRS eligibility requirements for educators in this week's Money It's Personal. If you're an educator filing a tax return this year, you may be eligible to deduct unreimbursed expenses for COVID-19 protective items used in the classroom. The IRS says these items include face masks, disinfectant for use against COVID-19, hand soap, hand sanitizer, disposable gloves, or other items recommended by the CDC. The educator expense deduction applies to eligible taxpayers for unreimbursed expenses paid or incurred after March 12, 2020 for these protective items. The IRS says eligible educators include any individual who is a kindergarten through 12th grade teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. The change allows educators to deduct up to $250 of qualifying expenses per year. If you're married and filing jointly with a spouse who is also an eligible educator, the deduction goes up to $500, but no more than $250 each. The IRS says the deduction applies to expenses paid or incurred only during the tax year. For more information about the COVID-19 related deduction, visit irs.gov. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. You started your taxes yet, Sarah? No, I was just thinking about like how I want to proceed with you, them. Are you afraid to look? afraid. <laughs> yeah, I already know I'm getting a tiny little deduction, but it's, I mean, a, a, a refund, refund, which is better than owing, of course. Yes, of course. 940 right now, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A Guinness record for the world's oldest water skier and a custodian's no-look basketball shot goes viral coming up in today's Take a Look. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. Get ready to revolutionize your bathroom experience and stop using toilet paper. How do you do that? With a bidet. The Slim Glow Bidet Attachment by BioBidet also features a night light. BioBidet believes that everyone deserves a clean and comfortable bathroom experience. You'll get everything you need to transform any toilet in your house. It's an easy DIY installation. Place the attachment and connect directly to your water supply with a provided brass adapter and braided metal hose. Requires no electricity, no wires, no extra plumbing, no hassle. The bidet has pressure control dial knobs, plus you'll save a bundle on all of the toilet paper that you won't have to buy. Now the retail price, $79. The case that deals price, $49.99. That is a 36% discount. Head over to caseatdeals.com for this deal, plus many more. A 94-year-old Canadian man took the plunge and became the world's oldest water skater. CNN's Jeremy Roth shows us in today's Take a Look at This. 
Check out the world's oldest water skier, 94-year-old Bob Hutchinson, tearing up a lake in Canada. Hutchinson's rip-roaring ride solidified his place in the record books after Guinness World Records confirmed the fantastic feat and his family surprised him with the news over a Zoom call. He was so giddy, he let out a celebratory yodel. Hello, yo. Hutchinson's sure-footed ski skills aren't just limited to water, he's also an accomplished snow skier. And even at his ripe old age, he shows no signs of slowing down. He says his amazing athleticism proves it's never too late to follow your dreams. This hardworking South Carolina man is pulling double duty as both bus driver and school principal. For Tommy Bolger, each day starts early with a check of his school bus. After dropping students off at three different schools, Bolger's day starts again as principal of Wren Elementary School. I love driving and I love kids, so why not? In the midst of a statewide driver shortage, Bolger stepped up to help out, and he says he's not the only one. All our educators all over the country that we're just doing stuff that we have, we've normally never done. Bolger's driving days are numbered though, as new drivers are training to take the wheel soon. Finally watch an Ohio middle school custodian nail a half court shot with his back turned. No one was around to witness Joe Orion's amazing trick shot, but after the school's principal pulled the surveillance and posted it to Twitter, this hardworking custodian's hoop dream shot is cleaning up on social media. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. He was pumped that he made it. The best shots always happen when no one's looking. Right. right? Ex except cameras are always watching. Always watching. And always. also, can we talk about the 94-year-old man's yodel? I know. I was going to say, Justin. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. You, you didn't see you, that coming? You need a yodel for us Have now, you? Justin. <laughs> I heard you're a great yodeler. From uh, who? From who? I know. But I'm going <laughs> to give you an out here, Justin. They're probably yodeling in New Braunfels as we speak. You're right, Mark. Uh, cold front's coming through. I like the transition. Uh, and temperatures have dropped there. We've seen them drop about 10 degrees just within the last 20 minutes or so. So we know the front's coming through New Braunfels. So let's take a look at the temperature extremes across the country. Yesterday got up to 90 down there in Florida, Miles City, which is just west of Miami. And then this morning, Lando Lakes, Wisconsin, negative 34 for 124 degree temperature difference. So that just gives you an idea of how cold this air mass is as it is sinking south. Right now here in San Antonio, we're sitting in 65 cloudy skies. East southeasterly winds at about three miles per hour. Front is still off to our north and northeast. Visibility, a problem around Randolph. Uh, it's down about two and a half miles there. Bernie stage, same story. Thicker fog out west. Places like Uvalde and Carrizo Springs down, about a, down to about a quarter of a mile and a half a mile respectively. Looks like the fog will improve a little bit here in the next couple of hours and we should see those visibilities come up. Okay, visible satellite picture. We can actually pick out the front. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right about there. We can see it's coming through New Braunfels, closing in on Canyon Lake, and then kind of parallels I-10 here. It looks like it's trying to cross I-10. So places like Seguin and uh, even Gonzales, you may start to feel some of this cooler air before we do here in San Antonio. And as we zoom out some, big cloud deck behind the front, very cold up across North Texas. Temperatures 22 right now, Wichita Falls 27 in Abilene, 30 in Dallas. And we mentioned some of the temperatures locally here, 48 Austin. And I just looked at the updated temperature there in New Braunfels. It's down to like 60 at this point. It's starting to come through Fredericksburg. So this front is going to progress south slowly, I think it's going to sort of lose speed a little bit as it works into the afternoon. And the question will become, will it make it here to San Antonio? I think it at least gets close enough to where temperatures don't really warm up all that much. We're thinking 60s today, maybe upper 60s. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And as we look at the temperatures here next couple days, that cool air may retreat a little bit uh, this afternoon and again tomorrow, where we're, we're still seeing some warm temperatures, especially south and west of San Antonio, 50s here. But as we get into Thursday, that cold air really does start to push in. We're talking 30s and 40s up across our northern counties by Thursday afternoon. And then we really start to feel it Friday, Saturday, but even more so Sunday into Monday. We're talking about temperatures in the 20s and 30s, freeze likely uh, here around the area. So it is going to get very, very chilly. Forecast calls for cloudy skies today, especially where we're seeing that frontal boundary and then some showers start to shift in tomorrow. I think our best chance for rain right now is Thursday. Scattered showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms. Those rain chances move away, but we'll get some more. And unfortunately, it's going to happen when 
we're seeing those very cold temperatures. So there is potential for a light wintry mix Sunday into Monday. Right now, it looks like precipitation will be light, and it's hard to say you know, what kind of impacts that will have, but we'll need to watch that very, very closely. In the meantime, 55 Wednesday, 20% chance of showers, 44 Thursday, 60% chance of showers and storms. And you see the cold air there with temperatures in the 40s by the end of the week, guys. Thank you, we Justin. No icy hearts this Valentine. That's right. Hopefully, no icy <laughs> hearts. 950, 66 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Coming up on live, Cal Penn from the series Clarice. Plus, we'll talk to Dr. Jennifer Ashton about her new book. See you soon here on live. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, join us for a Valentine's Day themed Katie's Science Lab experiment. What you will need for the Dancing Hearts activity is Conversation Hearts candy, Alka-Seltzer tablets, cl a clear cu cup or glass of water, create a reaction using Valentine's Day heart candies with Alka-Seltzer, and you can watch the candies dance around. Also, we want to see your videos of you trying these experiments from home. So we have a page on our website where you can submit these videos for a chance to be featured, big deal, on GMSA at 9. It's under the KSAT Kids tab on KSAT.com. To help fill the need of blood donations, our KSAT Community Party University Health hosting a blood drive this month. It's February 18th and 19th from 10 to 3 at the Witte Museum over on Broadway. If you'd want to participate, you need to make an appointment. You can do so by calling 210-358-2812 or visit donateblooddoday.com. All this information is on ksatcommunity.com. Let's check Transguide one more time, see how things are looking here. At about five minutes till 10 on your Tuesday morning, the fog is kind of hanging around right now at 1604 and Shanefield. Justin. Yeah, it's still a little bit foggy and temperatures today Probably going to stay in the 60s here in San Antonio. We'll be watching for that frontal battery as it slowly kind of works its way in. Cooler tomorrow. Chances of rain both Wednesday, but more so on Thursday. And some really cold stuff by the weekend. Now's the time to start making preparations for that uh, cold weather, guys. Well, as we know, Valentine's Day coming up on this Sunday. And although mass weddings at the Bear County Courthouse steps have been canceled for Valentine's Day, the county is continuing a modified tradition of free wedding ceremonies for Valentine's Day and for some during the month of February. Ah, uh, love is in the air. So all couples must secure a marriage license at least 72 hours before the marriage ceremony takes place, um, except they have a couple of exceptions. If the applicants obtain a written waiver from a judge or if one of the applicants is an active duty member of the armed forces of the U.S., they must show their active duty military person ID. All right, so here's the deal. Bear County clerk will be performing free wedding ceremonies 9 to 5 this Friday the 12th on the courthouse steps every half hour. No more than two couples per time slot. Wedding ceremonies are free, but a donation is suggested. For more information on this, go to our website at ksat.com. Thanks. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.